sight. <laughs> The first ever series to analyze the unexplored aspects and issues of Carnatic music. Dear Rasikas, welcome to the 21st episode of our Insight series. In the previous episodes, we had discussed about Gamakas in detail because of the fact that they are very, very important and integral to our Carnatic music. Earlier, I had also talked about the Gita or the Gitam, which forms a part of the Abhyasa Ganam. That is the first simple songs that the student learns when he starts learning music after the Sarli, Janta, Alangaram, etc. Today, we will move on to the compositional forms that are presented in a Karnatic Kacheri. This will be of great interest to Rasikas because Trying to know the different compositional forms that are presented in a concert makes for real interesting listening. When an artist starts performing a concert, generally he starts off with a Varnam. The Varnam is a very very interesting piece and it gives a very fitting start to the concert I would say. The Varnam also actually happens to be a part of the Abhyasa Ganam in the sense that it is a very very important tool for the student to understand the swaras and their nuances in a detailed manner. And incidentally it also forms a part of the sabhaganam in the sense that when we start singing a concert we generally take off with the varnam. Of course it's not necessary that every concert should start with a varnam but if we do include a varnam in a concert it would be the first piece in a concert. It is said that the Varnam sets a very right mood and uh, it keeps the concert going in a brisk pace and that's why we see that many stalwarts have also resorted to starting with traditional Varnams. Now what does the word Varnam actually mean? In Tamil if you take the word Varnanai it generally means a description and uh, in Sanskrit the verb form Varnoti means to elaborate or delineate, illustrate, describe, etc. So very appropriately we would see that the Varnam actually as a form tries to elaborate and expand on a particular Ragam in a very very detailed and intricate manner. Now compared to the Kriti, we will be talking about the Kriti in a later stage where we see that though we say Kriti, there are so many forms or so many dimension to the Kriti as lent by various Bhagekaras but from uh, many years from when the Varnam was actually started being composed we see that the Varnam has got a somewhat a rigid structural form and there are not many variations I would say in terms of the structure and uh, we see that it has two sections the Purvanga and the Uttaranga that is the first portion and the second portion first portion having the Pallavi, Anupallavi and the Mukta Iswaram then the Charanam is also called the Etukada Pallavi and it is followed by the Charana Swaras we will look all this into a more detailed manner a bit later and uh, we also would like to make a mention that when we compare to the Sarali, Janta etc where we have the Swaras as the predominant core material of the exercises and in the Gitam we see that we have simple structure of the Swaras to which there is a Sahitya for example if you take I will take Mohanam itself because we have a Gitam in Mohanam as well as a popular Varnam Ninnu Kori in the same Mohana Ragam if you take the Gitam Varavina you see like Varavina so there is a very simple structuring of the notes here like ga ga pa pa da pa sa sa 
ರೆ ಸದಪ್ಪ ದ ಪ ಗ ಗ ರಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಸೀ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗೀತಂ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ವರಂ ದರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಸೆಲೆಬಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಗ ಗ ಪ ಪ ವರ ವೀಣ ಮೃದು ಪಾಣಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ರಾಗಂ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ವೆರ್ ಎಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಣಂ ವಿ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ದ ಗಮಕಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ರಾಗ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೋಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ಮಚ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಿಕೇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ವರ್ಣಂ ನಿನ್ನು ಕೋರಿ ಇನ್ ಮೋಹನಂ ನಿನ್ನು So the basic uh, swaram of the first line is ga ga ri sa sa ri ri ga ga ri ri sa ri ga ri sa ri sa da sa ri ga pa ga ri sa ri so if you actually incorporate the typical gamakas of mohana then it would sound like this of course sometimes when we want to make it very very simplified and teach a very preliminary student we would sing like probably ga ga ri sa sa ri ri ga ga ri ri sa ri ga ri sa ri sa da sa ri ga pa ga ri sa ri that is without the gamakas but actually the purpose of the gamaka or the purpose purpose of the varnam is actually to help us understand the gamakas so it would be appropriate to teach every varnam along with the typical gamakas that go with the ragam now going a bit into the historical perspective bharata in the natya shastra he uses the term varna to mean a type of gana krama that is a melodic movement and the swara patterns of various kinds he calls them alankaras and he gives a four fold classifications here of sthayi arohi avrohi and sanchari sthayi of course refers to the notes in a very stationary position arohi of course we know in the arohana krama avrohi means in the avrohana krama and by sanchari he means the roundabout traveling over various notes so probably these four kinds of movements actually sum up the movement of the notes itself in a varna and are quite pertinent even in today's context i would say in that sense and uh, coming to the basic form of the varnam we could say that there is uniformity and a sense of rigidity in the composition itself here you see that unlike a kriti where the swaram is concealed and you sing only the sahityam for example if you take brava bharama raghurama if i were to notate this it would be like padani pa mag ga ma pa ma but of course we will never sing this swaram we will be only singing the sahityam but this is the undercurrent of swaras or the notation which goes below this particular words of brava bharama ragurama but uh, varnam on the other hand is a very unique form where you see that about half of the composition contains of explicit swaras itself so there are some sahitya syllables but a uh, most part of it you will have the swaras in their explicit form and that's why it makes it a very very unique form and uh, also we see that here the sahitya unlike a kriti where the sahitya conveys a lot of uh, lofty ideas sometimes they are able to convey so much actually so much of lyrical importance is there in a kriti 
but when it comes to a varnam we see that the sahitya becomes more as a tool for the exposition of the raga bhava only so sometimes we see that the sahitya gets so pulled out of proportion that sometimes we are not even able to recognize what the sahityam is for example if you take the atatala varnam in bhairavi viriboni it is only viriboni ne kori that is the only word that is being used in the entire avartana see how with the help of the elongation of the various vowels it gets an expansive treatment so here what is also important is that the word becomes only a tool for the exposition of bhairavi and to show the intricate details of bhairavi also we see that in the varnam the vowels in an expanded form form the core structure of the varnam itself like a e i o u which we have so a e u a these are the kind of uh, vowels which go to give an expansive form to the structure itself let's go into the viriboni varnam and see the first line ha ya ga ya vire bo saw that r e o these kind of vowels were expanded and that way this kind of there's also a very very interesting thing that when you have more of vowels it gives some kind of a fluidity to the ragam to move when there are more of consonants it stops the movement so especially a free movement so these kind of uh, vowels find a very very important uh, part in the compositional form called the varnam we look into some more examples here now to see how this happens for example in the charanam of the same bhairavi adatala varnam we see cheru nau mo chiru nau hu hu mo mo na chiru nau mo mo na this is the lyrics but see how it has been the small two words are expanded through the entire avartanam of the atatalam actually the words also are not complete in itself it just says of the face with a smile that is what chirunavu momuna means so what again it implies is that in a varnam the sahityam is actually not at all important i would say and uh, sometimes you also see that the absolutely there is no connection between even the pallavi and the anupallavi we'll give examples later about that coming to the gamakas again let us look at uh, the saveri varnam to see how the typical gamakas of saveri are incorporated within the varnam sari ma padasa sani da pa pa gari sa sar sudey ne ne ko ri chale maru lo u ko na ee re ee vele 
ಅಯ್ಯೋ ಸೀರ ಕಡೆ ಸರಿ ಗರಿ ಸರಿ ಸಗರಿ ಸನಿ ದ ಪದರಿ ಸಗರಿ ಗ ಸರಿ ದ ಸರಿ ಮಪ್ಪ ದ ದ ಪ ಮರಿ ಮಪದ ಸರಿ ಸ ಪ ಮರ ಪನಿ ದನಿ ಪದ ಮ ಪ ಸರಿ ಮ ಪದ ನಿ ದ ನಿ ದ ಪ ಮ ಪ ಸ ನಿ ರ ಪ ದ ರಿ ಸ ನಿ ರ ಪ ಮ ರ ಪ ನಿ ರ ಪ ದ ಸ ರಿ ಕರಿ ರಿ ದ ಕರಿ ಸ ನಿ ರ ದ ಸ ನಿ ರ ಪ ಮ ಗ ರಿ ಸ ಗ ರಿ ಸ ನಿ ರ ರಿ ಸ ನಿ ರ ಪ ಮ ಗ ರಿ ಸ ದ ಸೊ ನಾವು ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ Pallavi, Anupallavi and the Mukta Iswara itself, you are able to get a beautiful dimension of Saveri. And that is why it is also said that students must learn a lot of Varnams because through the movement of the notes, the Swaras, one is able to understand what is the intricacies of that particular Ragam. We will look into another example, Todi for example. ಇಂತ ಚೌಕ ಸೈಗಿ ಇಂತ ಚೌಕ ಸೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ವೇರ್ ಈವನ್ ದಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಸೀ ದಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ವರಂ ವಿಚ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ gives us a glimpse of that particular raga in a particular dimension so actually that way we see that varnams can offer a great insight to the student it can be also a very enriching experience to the listener because in the varnam only we see that the swaras are brought out explicitly so we can also enjoy how the movement of the ragam goes how the swaras are used the prayogas that are used as part of the ragam and so on in the same saveri varnam i would like to show you how the sahitya is actually of least importance in the sense that the pallavi and the anupallavi the sahitya are actually totally unconnected i would say in the first two lines he says sarasuda ninne kori sala marulu konnadira which means she is extremely infatuated with you and desires you in the next anupallavi section you see girini velayu sri venkatesha karunincha ide samayamu which means girini velayu sri venkatesha o venkatesha who resides in the hill karunincha ide samayamu this is the time for you to show compassion on me so the first line and the second line actually have got absolutely no connection and this could be probably seen in many varnas this again reiterates the fact that the sahitya only becomes a tool for the exposition of the ragam and it becomes some kind of a stress syllable we will now look into the parts of a varnam we will take the mohanam varnam ninukori itself again because that is something all of us know and would have heard many times ninno kori yo na nore ani ki le lo ka na ya ka the next part becomes the anupallavi nanno pa li pa sa ma ya mura na mi ta kripa ju te 
ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ಸರಿ ಸರಿ ಸ ಗರಿ ಗ ಸರಿ ಸದ ಸರಿ ಗರಿ ಗಪ ಗ ಪದ ಪ ಗ ಪದ ಪದ ಸರಿ ಗರಿ ಗ ಸ ರಿ ದ ಸ ಪದ ಸರಿ ಗ ಸ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಸರಿ ನಿಣು ಸನ್ನುತ್ತ ಗ್ರೀ ನೀ ಸನ್ನುತ್ತ ಗ್ರೀ ನೀ ವಾಸ ಗರಿ ಸರಿ ದಿ ದಸ ರಿ ಗರಿ ಸನ್ನುತ್ತ ಗ್ರೀ ನೀ ವಾಸ ಗ ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ಸರಿ ಗ ಗ ಪದ ದ ಸರಿ ಗ ಗ ಗ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಗ ಗ ಸ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಸಣ್ಣು ತ ಗ ಶ್ರೀ ನೀ ವಾಸ ಪದ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಸ ರಿ ಗರಿ ಸ ದ ಸ ರಿ ಗ ಪದ ಸ ಸ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಸಣ್ಣು ತ ಗ ಶ್ರೀ ನೀ ವಾಸ ಸ ರಿ ಗರಿ ಸ ರಿ ಸ ದ ಸ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಸರಿ ಸ ಸ ಸರಿ ರಿ ಗ ಗ ಪ ಪದ ಸ ರಿ ಗರಿ ಗರಿ ದ ಸ ರಿ ಸ ರಿ ಸ ಪದ ಸ ದ ಸ ದ ಗ ಪದ ಪದ ಪ ರಿ ಸ ದ ಪ ಗರಿ ಸ ರಿ ಸಣ್ಣು ತ ಗ ಶ್ರೀ ನೀ ವಾಸ ಸಣ್ಣು ತ ಗ ಶ್ರೀಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ಬರ್ನಮ್ but uh, i sang it here with a purpose in the sense that when you compare it with a kriti in kriti also we have the pallavi anupallavi and charanam but there is a difference in the gana krama in the sense that in a kriti you see that the pallavi followed after that there is a gap and then you have the anupallavi after the anupallavi the pallavi is again repeated after the charanam again we see that the pallavi is repeated whereas in the varnam we see that after the pallavi the anupallavi follows from it directly into it that is there is no passing between the pallavi and anupallavi so they become some kind of a composite section though we call each section a pallavi and the anupallavi followed by the mukta iswaras now the whole unit by itself becomes one part and interestingly also where in the kriti you see that after the charanam you sing the pallavi again here after the charanam we sing the charanam swaras one by one and after each of the swara is sung the charanam lives gets repeated after each of these swaras and there is no coming back to the pallavi finally as you would see in a kriti so though the terminologies of pallavi and pallavi and charanam are used both in the context of a varnam and the kriti you see that how each occurs in the context of a kriti or a varnam becomes quite different and that's a very very interesting study we have to make here and also another point i would like to make is about how the great composers of varnam have seen in detail about the possibilities of how a raga can be explored in which uh, sthai that is also very very important in the sense that in sahana varnam you see that the mandra sthai and the lower portion of that uh, madhya sthai are explored more in detail in the first itself like karunya pa ee ma che so self comes out very very beautifully in this context of the ri 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 ga ma pa ba ga ma ri ga ri sa ni sa da pa ma da ni sa saranga you would see that when it comes from the tarastai the ragam blossoms much more better like inta mo di se ya where the heart of the ragam actually lies in the avarona kramo like sani da ba ba ri ga ma ri sa so the vagekara has captured the varnam from the tarastai like this we see that uh, the great composers of varnam have tried to explore the dimensions of the ragam through the compositional form called the varnam we will be discussing in more detail about the varnam uh, coming episodes because 
this is again a very very vast subject and it can offer so much of insight both to the student who is practicing music as well as to the listener for the listener i would say that for a rasika it's an enriching experience where you are able to see the swaras in their beautiful movements in the varnam as i said earlier in a kriti they get hidden and it is only the sahitya that comes to the fore whereas in a varnam you are able to see the uh, swaras explicitly how and they move within the gamut of the ragam with this we come to the conclusion of this particular episode if you do have any feedback or questions about this episode please do feel free to email or whatsapp to us thank you very much